Good morning. From a very windy day here in um, Fishuk, I think the wind is bringing us rain. We're really praying for it. I want to start off our five-minute study today by turning to Revelation 19, and I want to read there verse 10, but the last part of verse 10. The Bible teaches me that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Now, whenever Jesus speaks to us, which is his testimony, he speaks to us through the prophets. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, we read this. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, who he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe. The sun is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. Here I'm told that God, when he communicated with us in the past, he would speak to us through dreams and visions. But in these last days, he has spoken to us through his son, who is not only the creator, but the sustainer, and he sustains everything by the word of his mouth. Now let's get back to Daniel chapter 2. Nebuchadnezzar has had his dream. Daniel is about to tell him what the dream means. So let's have a look at that. I'm going to start off today by reading from verse 31. Daniel says, You looked, O king, and there before you stood a large statue, an enormous, dazzling statue, awesome in appearance. Imagine that. In his dream he sees a statue. The head of the statue was made of pure gold its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of baked clay. While you were watching, a rock was cut out, but not by human hands. It struck the statue on its feet of iron and clay and smashed them. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were broken to pieces at the same time and became like chaff on a thresh threshing floor in the summer. The wind swept them away without leaving a trace, but the rock that struck the statue became a huge mountain and filled the whole earth. This was the dream. Imagine that Daniel is telling the king, this is what you dreamt. You dreamt about the statue, head of gold. Chest of silver, belly of bronze, um, legs of iron, feet of iron and clay, and then this rock, not cut out by human hands, but cut out of a mountain, which strikes this, this statue on its feet, smashes it to pieces, the structure falls down, the gold, the silver, the bronze, the iron, is all smashed up into a powdery form, and the wind blows it away. But this rock that was cut out, not cut out with human hands, fills the whole earth. This is the dream. I wonder what God was trying to tell us. Was he trying to reveal something to us about himself? Maybe that he is sovereign, that he is the king of kings and lord of lords. And as David, uh, sorry, as, as Daniel had prayed, he sets up kings and disposes them. He sees into the future, although it's darkness to us, but to him it's light. Is God trying to show us that he, one of the character qualities of his being is that he not only creates or sustains by the breath of his mouth, but that he can see the future. I want to now show you this, that in verse 37, Daniel starts to interpret the dream. He says, you, O king, are the king of kings. Now, I want you to notice here, a small king of kings, that means... Nebuchadnezzar was a great king, and amongst all the kings, he was the king of kings. The God of heaven has given you dominion and power and might and glory. Do you remember we read that in um, Jeremiah chapter 27, where God said that I'll even make the creatures of the world and all nations be subject to you. In your hands he has placed mankind and the beasts of the field and the birds of the air, Wherever they live, he had made you ruler over them all. You are 
the head of gold. Amazing. God starts giving us this interpretation. And he starts off with the present. He starts off where Daniel is in the king's presence. And he says, the head of gold that you saw, that is your king. Your kingdom, Babylon, is the head of gold. Now, in my next study, we're going to look at what God reveals to Nebuchadnezzar. And I want you to notice something about this, that Nebuchadnezzar does not take kindly to this. Initially, he bows the knee. But in the next chapter, we're going to read something about this. Dear friends, I want you to know that God is the creator, that he made you, and that he wants to keep you and look after you. Why do you worry about what you're going to eat or drink? Why do you worry about what you're going to wear? If God is your creator and your sustainer, won't he look after you? We are told that sparrows fall to the ground, which God sees. And if he sees a sparrow, which is so meaningless, fall to the ground, won't he be observant of you? Won't he know what your needs are? Go to him. Let him speak with you. Let him tell you all the good things that he has in store for you. May God bless you today as you just think about this vision and that God loves you.